when we complain, when we murmur, when we groan, when we dislike the situation, or when we dislike people who are around us, their attitudes, it's kind of like violating God's will. How do we know this? We will look into four points from the book of Exodus. A most wonderful and gracious God. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time you have given us. Thank you for the wonderful fellowship, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings that you have showered upon this whole week for us. Shaping us, molding us, guiding us, guarding us. Thank you for all the provisions you have given us, Lord. Help us to be grateful for all those things. Lord, you now speak, we hear, Lord. Your words are always alive and active. Help these words to bring more glory to your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 There was once a man who wanted to join a monastery. Everybody of us know like how life is going to be totally different in a monastery. So this man joins the monastery. So it's a ritual in the monastery. When you join the monastery, you have to take different vows. So a vow of silence, vow of um, chastity. So there are like four or five vows this guy takes and he joins the monastery. The rule of the monastery is you can speak to the superior of the monastery two words for every 10 years. So first 10 years goes by, this man talks to the superior, two words, bed hard. Another 10 years goes, he comes in front of the superior, says two words, food bad. Another 10 years goes, he again appears, and he says, I quit. So the superior says, I am not at all surprised because of all these years, you have just given us complaints. Got it? First 10 years, bed is hard. Second 10 years, he says, for this bad. And finally, he says, I quit. It's more like a complaining or more like a murmuring. So this attitude of complaining and murmuring is more like a negative attitude. This is totally focused on our immediate presence, on our circumstances, or It could be because of people who are involved in our lives. There's an interesting uh, scientific evidence that comes out from Stanford University, which says half an hour of complaining every day, it brings about brain damage. It's really interesting to see that. You know, the most critical Thing that happens in murmuring is because of a critical spirit we have. The kind of grumbling, murmuring, complaining. We all the time ignore this. But you know, this is in direct violation of God's will. What does that mean? It's a sin which we always overlook. When we complain, when we murmur, when we groan, when we dislike the situation, or when we dislike people who are around us, their attitudes, it's kind of like violating 
God's will. How do we know this? We will look into four points from the book of Exodus. Exodus 14, uh, chapter 14, verses 11. They said to Moses, was it because there, was, there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. So we look here at the Israelites grumbling about leaving Egypt on the day of the crossing. How long have they been here out of Egypt? Just 48 hours out of Egypt. And they are totally dissatisfied. They haven't crossed the Red Sea, but they have been provided with the cloud and the fire as a protection. And still, they are totally dissatisfied with their situation. The next thing we look in at Exodus 15 verses 22 to 25. Exodus 15, 22 to 25. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. I will read the last part again. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. Second incidence of these people grumbling. They grumbled first time because they were fearful of the situation. Now they grumble because they lack potable water. How long have it been like since they have come out of Egypt here? Just three days. Just three days. And they have seen a wonderful miracle that the Red Sea parted and these people walked on dry land. But still, people forgot and they grumbled. The third incident on Exodus 16, 1 to 3. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month, after they had come out of Egypt, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Here, they grumble because of lack of tasty and dietary food. And the fourth incident, they grumbled against God, which we see in Exodus 16, 8. If you look into the eighth verse, 
Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. So what is, what is the picture we get from this when we read this story in Exodus? We see the people of Israelite, how they complain. But when we read this, and when I particularly read this, this is what I infer. These people are so ignorant and they are so forgetful of the Lord's provision and they were so foolish. So what does that define? They are so ungrateful. They are so ungrateful. They murmured against their gracious and loving God. God did not put anything hindering or he did not pull out anything of these people. All the thing he did is these people were slaves for 400 years. They do not even know what freedom was. So he pulls them out of Egypt, leads them, and he leads them from the safety of the Egyptians. What we need to look here is these Israelite people, they were afraid of a lot of things, afraid of being killed by the Egyptians. That was their first fear. They were facing the sea to the front and the Egyptian army behind them. Every believer, every one of us, have gone through this. I have gone through this. And every one of you who are hearing this have gone through this facing of the Red Sea. What is our response? What is our response? Is it to be faithful to the Lord? Or do we have to grumble against him? Why, Lord, did you put me in this situation? If you have asked that question, it's the time that we repent and ask God, God, thank you for bringing me to this place. And Lord, what next? What am I supposed to do? How are you going to lead us, Lord? These should be the questions that we need to ask rather than to complain and murmur. These people have forgotten the providential hand of God that led them out of Egypt. And again, after three days of crossing, they murmur because they were lacking portable water. What do we infer from this? When we look into our lives, we have gone through trials and tribulations. And every trial and every tribulations, every testing period, God is leading us through those. I used to always say like, when we walk through the valley, we need that patience. God is always leading us through that dark valley. And we are patient, wait for him. He will take us to the mountain where we would see his glory. But these people, they have totally ignored God's hands, providential hands that gave them everything. So what do we want to look into this, the whole picture? 
first thing is God's providence and the Israelites' complaints. What does that mean? When we look into the Israelites, these people forgot what God did for them. They were so com were in comfort in Egypt, even though they were in bondage. They think back about the comforts of their lives, what they had in Egypt. When they left Egypt, they were so happy, they were so joyful, thinking they are going to the promised land, which was so easy for them. But when they started the travel, they realized that it's not going to be an easy travel for them. They forgot the cloud that was protecting them. They forgot the fire that was protecting them. Immediately when they saw the Egyptian army with six and the chariots coming behind them, they were afraid. They were totally terrified. They didn't have any hope of God being able to rescue them from that situation. What does that mean for them? They were so ungrateful in their spirits. So ungrateful. They were in slavery, as I told, for 400 years. You know that. And they witnessed the plagues, but they didn't have anything such like that. When the Red Sea parted, they walked on dry land. And they came out, and they found that they didn't have any water. They grumbled. They were grumbling because they were afraid of their lives. They were totally afraid. These people, they have totally forgotten their God who's always provided us whatever we need. He knows. The second thing, what we see from this complaint is, there are two fundamental things here they complained about. They complain about what they had and about what they did not have. They complain about what they had and about what they did not have. So we'll look into the first thing, like they complain about what they had. All they had is trials, hardships, discomfort. As I told, like they were living in their comforts in Egypt. But when they were led out, they have to go through deserts. The verses, whatever we read from Exodus 15 and 16, they go to the desert of Shur and the desert of Sin. Desert is not a comfortable place for people. So these people, they were grumbling and they were complaining of what they had, their discomforts. The second point is they complain about what they didn't have. They didn't have a variety of appetizing food which they had. If you look into the verses, they were saying like we ate very tasty food. Though they were in captivity, they were having a variety of appetizing food, which they did not find in the desert. So they were complaining about that. And when we look into the later parts, which we will look into in the next segment, these people, they were complaining in shorter periods when God was able to remove them out of distress every other time. 
it's not even like three months since they were grumbling and they thought like the journey from Egypt to the promised land is going to be a quicker one which they didn't realize why God is doing it. When we look into Exodus chapter 13, verses 17, it says like when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter for God, said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So what we see here is the challenge of faith. When we move forward in faith, we need to go through distress, trials, and tribulation. And the end journey is the promised land. The promised land is far off but God works according to his timetable. Most of us, we always have a tendency to rush the same thing the Israelites did have. And one more thing what we see here is when we complain of our circumstances, we always deny God's protective care for us. Everyone have gone through trials and tribulations. Can we deny anything that God has provided us? Just think over and contemplate. Is God a good God? Is he a reliable God? Did he provide all we wanted? We need to contemplate on these to say, yes, God has been good to me. He's a reliable God. He is the provider. Our circumstances doesn't reflect on our beliefs because we walk by faith not by sight. We need to always remember our provider, how he has led us this far. And the second point, what we want to look here is when we complain, we tend to spread the spirit of complaint against the, amongst the other people. When we have a critical spirit, when we always have a complaining mode, when we sit together and in, in not in fellowship, when we sit together as friends and families and when we grumble and complain, you know what happens? It's contagious. It spreads to other people. You give your critical spirit to other people and they start complaining about other things. Let us examine ourselves and see how we behave, how we respond to situations. Are we grumbling? Are we murmuring? Are we forgetting the providential things that God has given us? Let us always be careful whenever we sit among people, when we chat with people, are we a complaining spirit? And finally, when we see all these things, when we complain, we undervalue the rich provisions what God has given us. What does that mean? Like, <clears throat> When God provided all these provisions for us, and then still we fear discontent, that doesn't show that we are grateful. Whatever we have, whatever God has provided, we need to be content with what we have. 
this is the situation like when we see like somebody else is having something better we complain to god god why didn't i have that and when we have some trouble we always complain god why did you give this to me both the situations are not good for us god knows what to give when to give and how to give this should be a good time that we try to contemplate on how god has provided certain things for us and not giving certain things he knows he is our omniscient omnipotent omnipresent god when we look into the lives of the israelites five things we notice the pattern how they left egypt and they moved towards the promised land they were in total excitement because they were in bondage for 400 years they were totally excited and when they crossed the red sea they were totally excited and once they crossed the red sea and then they were walking into the open wilderness they had huge expectations they didn't even know where they were going how far the promised land is going to be that's the reason they were grumbling right because like god took them on a detour they had huge expectations and then when they started moving towards the wilderness moving from desert to desert they had a lot of disappointment which brought a different experience for them that experience brought out a totally different exposure for them what is that exposure their hearts were exposed they were grumbling they were complaining they had an unbelieving heart that's the exposure so they were excited they had a huge expectation and they had a different experience and they were exposing their unbelieving hearts the most important thing here is the most important thing is the expression of god here the god the almighty god he was so gracious so gracious to demonstrate his faithfulness to these people in spite of their grumbling in spite of their complaining is there any way if any one of us have such a grumbling or a complaining spirit or a murmuring spirit can we examine ourselves and see what we are lacking as i told when we grumble when we grumble we are ungrateful to him ungrateful to our heavenly father who gave us all these things the life we live the provisions what he has given us the family he has built the jobs that we have everything is his the breath we breathe that's more important it's his provision when we wake up in the morning it's his grace it's his mercy it has got nothing to do with us let us examine ourselves how we respond to situations are we moving forward in faith or are we having a hindsight 
let this be a moment for us to contemplate on that. Remember how God has taken us out and blotted our sins. Look back into the years when we were all unbelievers. How he showed us a path so that we would accept him. Just look, look back into the years. Remember how graciously he has helped us to bring us this godly family of us. It's not our, it's not our work. We have to remember that. It's his provision. Remember how ugly our sins were before we turned into him. Remember how he saved us from a car crash. Everyone have got that. Remember how he has saved the sickness of our family. We need to remember during dark periods of our jobs, struggling times, when we struggle through jobs, moving from one job to the other, how he was so great enough to provide you one such like that. Let us remember how he has miraculously healed us. Let us remember how he has answered impossible situations to possible situations. Everybody have gone through that. I mentioned like every believer have faced the Red Sea situation. Remember how he turned that situation into a better one for us. Let us contemplate. Let us be grateful to our provider at this moment. Let us not be always be murmuring and complaining. Let us always be thankful to him. When we look into the, the whole picture of the Israelites moving out of Egypt, traveling towards the promised land, two things, just two words, the ungrateful, unbelieving, hearts of the people and the gracious hands of God. These are the two things we always look into. Let us always remember that the God we serve is the provider. He knows what is the best for us. He tests us through the wilderness. Are we coming out unharmed is the question. Always remember, always remember his mighty hands. No believer is left all alone in the wilderness who would wait for him, who would trust him, who would have faith in him. Always remember how he has provided good things for us. Let us be content with what we have. The reason we pray, give us our daily bread. The Lord would not show us a huge focus forward, but he would show us every stride and every step we make. That's what he did for all the prophets. That's what we read in the Bible. One step at a time, he would do it. All we have to do is have the faith in him, trust in him, obey in him. 
Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Thank you for the words you have given us, Lord. Lord, help us to be always content with what we have. Thank you for all the provisions you have given us, Lord. Let us not be an unbelieving heart. Let us not always respond to the circumstances, Lord, because we serve the living God who lives within us. Glorifying your name, Lord, let us always walk as lights and salt, shaking and shining wherever we go, glorifying your name. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.